Hey, this is Alex, and Cold Iron Studios recently sent me over an early preview build of Aliens Fireteam Elite, which I had minimal knowledge about going into, but it turns out this might actually turn out to be a pretty solid co-op shooter. I was thinking Back for Blood was going to be the one and only savior of the co-op genre this year, but now I plan on also dumping a decent amount of time into Aliens as well, since it's shaping up to be better than I expected. Now first and foremost, the standout element to me were the Xenomorphs themselves being able to crawl all over the place, be it walls, ceilings, out from air ducts, and other hiding places, making for a great change of pace from the traditional slow lumbering zombies of similar games, which usually only stick to one horizontal plane. There are also beefcake xenomorph types that can pounce from the ceiling, spit acid from a distance, and just be a general nuisance for the team, being able to jump in, get in damage, and flee to pop up later from somewhere unexpected. Not managing to finish off those special xenomorphs and letting them get away adds a great sense of unease since they can ruin your team's day if you're not paying attention to your surroundings. Zoe. Prowler behind us. Ah, oh, there's a ceiling Holy one. Shit, that one scared me. First jump scare of the session. The xenomorph threat wouldn't matter too much if the game was a total cakewalk though, but luckily the difficulty seems pretty well tuned here. It requires you to stick together to survive and carefully juggle your ammo, healing, and consumable items you find around the maps like turrets, mines, and special ammo types. There are many different difficulty levels which can really boost the overall threat and challenge cards that you or your teammates can apply which add various modifiers to matches for the chance at greater experience or currency rewards. Some of these might force you to use pistols only, add more hazardous xenomorph types, or boost headshot damage while reducing it everywhere else, among many other challenge cards you can acquire. You will want that boost in experience and money because your characters do have a combat rating score which adheres to the perks your class has equipped and the guns and attachments you have assembled. The weapon modification system is fairly standard, but there are some pretty cool weapons you can get later on like big ol' flamethrowers, grenade launchers, or miniguns. The various character classes can only wield certain types, so you might not always be able to use the most destructive ones. The most interesting upgrade component I found to be is the perk system, which allows you to adjust the properties of your active abilities and passives. You place these perks on an expanding grid, and you'll need to Tetris piece them together in the most effective ways to build out the best synergy of modifiers. Now you combine all that aforementioned stuff together and you should have the basic foundation of Aliens Fireteam Elite, but this is still an early build so there are some areas that could use a bit more polish before launch. Some of the animation fluidity could use a bit more love, and I haven't mentioned the synthetic humanoid enemy types up until this part because they are just not anywhere near as fun to fight as the Xenomorphs. But in conclusion, Aliens Fireteam Elite is scheduled for a late August launch, and myself and my two co-op buddies went from, what exactly even is this game, to, okay yeah we're definitely playing this on release. <laughs> Good try. Now if you happen to have any more questions about Fireteam Elite, hit me up in the comments and I'll see what I can answer, and also let me know your thoughts on everything I just showed off. As always, this has been Alex from Boomstick Gaming, and thanks for watching.